what is up guys james carter tv here for yet another video in my 32 teams in 32 days 2015 nfl season preview videos today we are talking about the denver broncos and this is a team i think is going to get me in trouble um there are some issues on this team but i'm going to stick with them i'm going to pick them to win the afc east i'm already spoiling that i'm going to pick them to win the afc east I'm going to pick them to make the playoffs, but man, am I worried. Usually, I like to start with the strengths, and I'll go to the weaknesses, but let's talk about the weaknesses first. The offensive line, what is going, going, I mean, wow, what is going to go on there? All right, you drafted Ty Sambrello, or Tim Brilo, however you want to pronounce it, out of Colorado State. I liked him. Um, you drafted a little early than I would have liked, but it's fine. Okay. Because of the injury to Ryan Clady, now you are starting Ty Sambrao, presumptively, unless if he loses his uh, camping job, uh, or maybe Ryan Harris behind him, but you don't want to start him. And then next to him, the left guard position, oh my god, who's starting there? And then next to him, you have Gino Gronkowski. Maybe Max Garcia can beat him in camp. But that middle to left offensive line is what is going on there. Now, maybe Sam Braille's great. Maybe this guy comes in. He's the best left tackle, rookie left tackle this league has ever seen. He's great. He protects paid men. He's blindside. Great, fantastic, awesome, wonderful, great. But, man, I, I don't know, especially with this team. And then on the right side, you have Chris Clark. Okay, he's decent. And then Luis Vasquez, who's by far, I mean, it's not even close. This is the best guard. This is the best offensive lineman you have. I mean, it's not even close. Luis Vasquez, good. You stole him from San Diego years ago. So, maybe it was this year. I don't even know. All right. Um, that's the big, big weakness. The next weakness is the defensive line. Okay, Derek Wolf. On one side, Vance Walker behind him. Williams at the nose tackle position. I don't like that. But then it's salvaged because you have Malik Jackson as your right end. Okay, that's one good piece of the offensive line. The other pieces, I don't know. Yeah, Sylvester Williams, how's he going to do? He hasn't played much over the years. They prepared. They drafted him years ago. I think it was 2013 NFL Draft. He hasn't played much up to this point, a point, but now that Terrence Pot Rose Knighton is gone, he has to step up. He has to play. How is he gonna do? He hasn't done very well so far. So yeah. So that's really it. <laughs> now, the, the big problem I have with the weaknesses they have, it could prove to be problematic in the division of which they are in. When you're going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, who have. Tom Baha Lee and Justin Houston that are coming after your offensive line. You need to have guys that can protect Peyton Manning. Uh, because Peyton Manning is getting bum rushed. He's getting pass rushed. He's getting knocked down. He's getting sacked. He's getting hurried. He's in trouble. You need to have him upright. You need to have him throwing good balls. You need to have him healthy. Uh, also, because he's 39 years old, this guy's if he gets hit enough, the bones are going to break and your season will be finished before you can say Brock Osweiler. Okay? So... Can Ty or whoever started a left tackle stop Tom Bali and Justin Houston for coming at Peyton Manning? I don't trust that. Uh, the Chargers, Melvin Ingram, he's coming after you. The Raiders, Khalil Mack, he's coming after you. Uh, and then your defensive line, you have to protect. Uh, you have to go against good running backs. You have to go up against Melvin Gordon, Jamal Charles. Uh, so uh, in the division you're in... I don't know if those weaknesses are going to help you a lot. And I like the Chargers and I like the Chiefs. And they're going to be coming for you like they came for you in 2013. Uh, not 2014. 2014, they weren't as impressive. But 2013, they certainly came for your asses. And you could feel the heat. You held them off, but now you're not as good as you were then. Now, the thing is about this Denver Broncos team. They have now became, to me, a defensive team. I don't care about the offense anymore. Uh, no more talk about the, this offense. The defense is what is salvaging and saving this team from missing the playoffs. We're talking about elite defenders. Von Miller as your outside linebacker primarily. And then DeMarcus Ware opposite of him. Not a raw deal. And then you have the most underrated uh, amongst fans. I, uh, journalists, media, they know. 
uh, the most underrated corner in the NFL, maybe in NFL history, in Chris Harris Jr., who's on the right side, who can cover number one quarterbacks. I mean, you ask the average fan, who is the Broncos' best quarterback? They will tell you, I keep to leave 100%. 100% they're going to tell you. No, sir, it's Chris Harris Jr. And you Broncos fans are already smart enough to know that, so I don't need to educate you about that. But I can't believe ain't bad either. So you got two bookend cornerbacks on either side, two bookend outside linebackers. Behind them, you have T.J. Ward, formerly of the Cleveland Browns, came in last year, played well. So good, you don't have a free agent bust on your hands. Next to him, the free safety position, I don't trust it. Right now, you have Stewart starting. I don't know what he's going to do, but it, okay, it's fine. Now, he's average. Blah, blah. Inside linebackers, I like him. You have the good Brandon Marshall of this world, and you have Danny Trevathan next to him. So good, not great, but good inside linebackers there. Slot corner, uh, Bradley Roby looks to play there. They drafted him out of Ohio State in the 2014-2014 NFL Draft. Hopefully, I mean, he's already shown me more than Sylvester Williams has in his position. So, yeah, yeah, that going for him. So, hopefully, you can hold that position down. You wasted. To me, you wasted your first-round pick on Shane Ray. I I think it was a waste. I think it was a a wasted draft pick. I think there were bigger needs, like I just specified, uh, on the offensive line. Uh, on the defensive line, uh, and if the football is really one in the trenches, as some coaches will tell you, the Broncos could be in trouble. But let me get to my win-loss prediction first. Also, the big strengths, uh, Peyton Manning, duh. I mean, this guy, look, he's better than people are making him out to be. Yes, the last game we saw stunk, and that plagues your mind. Um, and also, the Cincinnati Bengals game on Monday Night Football did not do him any favors either. Uh, but, come on, this is still, uh, uh, at this stage, uh, a top six, at least, uh, quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you'd love to have him on your team. Unless if you're not the Packers, the uh, Indianapolis Colts, the Seahawks. Hell, even the Seahawks, honestly. I think Peyton Manning would win last year's Super Bowl if he was on the Seattle Seahawks. I think you can make that goddamn argument. I'll make it. Um, point is, unless if you don't have a top five quarterback, hey, you'd like to have Peyton Manning for this year. Oh, one year only one-year deal? Yeah, you'd like it. All right, so wide receivers. People say they don't trust his position now that um, who left? Your boy. I don't need. Wow, look at me. Look how unprepared or ill prepared I am. Okay, someone left. I can't remember who they are right now. But you do have Demarius Tom, a Wes Welker. I mean, come on. Look, this guy had concussions, retirement. He should retire. He's done. But you do have Demarius Thomas again. And really, to me, a top five wide receiver in the league. And then next to him, you have Emmanuel Sanders, who had 1,500 yards. Are you kidding me? 1,500 freaking yards last year or something like that. 13, 1,400, 1,500 yards. They'll be fine. And Cody Latimer, who uh, out of Indiana, yeah, Indiana 2014 NFL draft is someone that could do well. Andre Caldwell will only do well because he has Peyton Manning. If he was on any of the other 31 teams in the NFL, he would do absolutely nothing. Except for maybe with Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers. But besides that, he will do absolutely nothing. So, the wide receivers are fine. Uh, the running backs are fine. I don't understand what they're doing now. Maybe the coaches are smarter than me. Um, but I look and I say, Monty Ball, we need to start this guy. But they love them some C.J. Anderson. They love them some Ronnie Hillman. I mean, they're talking about Monty Ball being the third uh, running back. Um, I think that's kind of a waste of talent, but okay, fine, whatever. Maybe Gary Kubiak is smarter than I. So, win-loss predictions. Best case scenario, these issues prove to be non-issues. Gino Gardkowski plays better than he has his whole career. Not going to happen. And Ty Sambrao is the best left tackle in NFL history. Could happen. I'm not betting on it. Maybe you can. I'm not. Just Maybe Sylvester Williams is the best or, like, comes out of nowhere and sprouts into the breakout player, and he's great, and, oh, my God, he's great. Um, so, best case scenario, I'm wrong. They run out. Uh, they run over their division. Oh, and I forgot to look at the schedule. Let's pull that up. But 13-3 is the best case scenario. Real quick, the schedule and the toughness of it. 
Um, it's easier than it was last year. Remember, the Broncos had one of the tougher schedules last year, and they still went, what was it, 12-4? and four? They still went 12-4 and four last year. So, hey, give props to them for that. Um, this season, you find yourselves going up against the AFC North, uh, which means yet another game against Baltimore. Baltimore could face you or give you some troubles because, again, they have pass rushers in Elvis Dumerville and Terrell Suggs, and over the middle they have Brandon Williams uh, and Timmy Jernigan that could feast on your offensive line. So even though you're at home and you think, yeah, we got him, we beat him like 48 to nothing the year before, hey, their, their pass rush could give you issues and trouble, so just be prepared for that. Um... You go to Pittsburgh, I think that's a loss. I think you're in trouble. Besides that, you host Cincinnati and you host, or you go to Cleveland, that's fine. You also have the luxury of playing in the AFC West against the Raiders. That's a sweep good. Um, the Chargers and the Chiefs, I'm not sure. I think you're going to split with them, man. I like the Chiefs. I like the Chargers this season. So that's 4-2 and two in the AFC East. Or AFC West, excuse me. Wow. Um, again, in the AFC North, I'd say either three and one or two and two, either one of those. Let's say three and one. So three losses so far, I've counted, but this is very presumptive and projective. You also face the Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis, and you had trouble with that two years ago. I don't know how it was, and maybe last year too. I, I forgot who won last year. Um, so we'll see how that develops itself. You host. New England, that's going to be interesting. And then you go to, or you're not, I mean, you don't go to, but you face the NFC North, including trips to Detroit. That's going to be difficult. Trips to Chicago, you'll be fine. You host Green Bay, that's no easy task. And you host Minnesota, they're pretty good. So it's a it's another difficult schedule for the for the Denver Broncos. Real quick, let me check if they beat Indianapolis. I know Indianapolis beat them. Um, maybe on Andrew Luck's sophomore season. I'm not sure about the junior season. Okay, no, the the Broncos did beat the Colts twice. Hell, I mean, I, no, not twice, once. Once they beat them in, um, in Denver, and then they lost in the playoffs. How could I forget about that, losing in the playoffs 24-13? to So who knows who's going to win the Indianapolis game? It's another difficult schedule for the Denver Broncos. I mean, right there, I count five losses, and that's what I'm sticking to. I predict them going 11 to five. The worst case scenario, the Chargers come, baby. The Chiefs come, baby. Um, the offensive line is an issue. The defensive line is an issue, and they go nine to seven. They miss the playoffs. Peyton Manning retires, and that's the end of the Peyton Manning era. And that's a strong possibility. And that's why I open this video by saying. The Denver Broncos are a team that's going to get me in trouble because I could really see that 9-7 happening. It's something with the NFL, you know, there's something that's going to happen. There's a team that has been a staple that's been really good that's going to fall off, and it could be this one, and I could really see that 9-7 scenario. Now, I'm not going to predict it. Again, 11-5, winners of the AFC West. But I think the Chargers are coming back. I think the Chiefs are coming back. And I think there could be issues on the way. Until next time, James Carter TV. I'm out. Peace.